that was in a strong pegasus as she faced off against an earth pony mare. It was raining and mud covered the ground. My host was slowly walking around her opponent, grinning as she said, Come on, Duster, is that all you got? <laughs> you wish, Sunspot! The earth pony said as she attacked. Sunspot jumped over Duster and landed on her back, knocking her to the ground. She twisted around then pinned her down, holding her face into the mud and keeping her in a strange hold so the other mare couldn't move. She held her like that for a few seconds until another mare's voice said, Match! Sunspot wins this round too! My host got back to her hooves and helped Duster up. Good job, Duster. But you need to stop charging me and trying to trick me. Duster smiled. I did. You're just too fast. Line up! The other mare who stopped the match yelled. My host stood at attention and faced the other mare. When my host's eyes fell on her, I saw it was Cloudy Nights. She was younger than when I saw her in Greta's memory orb, and she was still beautiful, even in military fatigues with a short, wet mane and mud on her hooves. She waited for my host and Duster to line up with the rest of their group before she started to pace and talk. That was well done, Cadet Sunspot. Though you need to watch your opponent when you do a trick like that. If you were even a little slower, Duster would have had the hold on you, not the other way around. Yes, ma'am, my host said. Another stallion came up to stand next to Cloudy Nights. It was Big Mac. Howdy, Cloudy Nights. Mighty good team you got going. She looked at him and nodded. Most of them, anyway. Can't say much for the other Pegasus. My host and the rest of the ponies all in line looked towards the end of the line, with a scrawny-looking Pegasus was. I couldn't make him out very well from where Sunspot was standing, but I could see a gray coat and a short black mane. Big Mac looked over at him, too, and then said to Cloudy Nights, Sure, he's skinny and all, but... That hasn't had time to bulk up yet. I'm sure with some hard work we can make something out of him. He can barely fly, Big Mac, she said, then looked back at the skinny Pegasus. Cadet Moon, come forward. The Pegasus took a second as he looked at the others. Now I can see his face better. Shocking green eyes and a nasty scar over his left one. It was Night Stalker, or Absent Moon, right now. I could barely believe it. He didn't look like the stallion who led the children of the night. No, Absent Moon looked scared, weak, and shy. It was like he didn't want any of the ponies here to look at him or even speak to him. It was like he wasn't one of them. Or they frightened him somehow. You were given an order, cadet, Big Mac said, his voice stern but not unkind. Absent Moon winced, then looked at Big Mac and Cloudy Nights, and walked over until he was face to face with them. He saluted them, then said in his normal deep voice, though sounding scared to speak, Sorry, sir. All right, no need to be sorry. Just follow orders as soon as you hear them and you'll have no problems, Big Mac said. Yes, sir, Absent Moon said, standing straighter. Now, Cloudy Nights, Says you have a problem flying, is that true? He asked. No, sir. Just haven't had much time to do it since I joined up. Absent Moon said. Cloudy Nights made an irritated noise. You failed your flight evaluation, Moon. You're lucky that you were given a chance to join this group. I only failed, ma'am, because the test was unfair. Absent Moon said shyly. Unfair how? She asked, sounding angry. And they set that test up to show off how well Pegasi can deal with a fight combat. I was never trained to do that where I came from. Even though most of the creatures I grew up with do fight in the air for a living, my gran taught me different ways of flying and fighting. My instructor at the flight camp didn't want to listen, and he sent me here. Absent Moon said. You're that Pegasus that grew up in Griffinstone, right? Big Mac asked. Yes, sir. Absent Moon replied. I was just talking to that griffin friend of yours before I headed over here. She said something about how you weren't given a chance to show off your skills. Big Mac said with a chuckle. If he can't do what's needed to fight a war in the skies, then he's useless up there. 
He's lucky I haven't kicked him out of my group, too. Cloudy Knight said. I don't know. Maybe he just needs some pony to give him a chance to shine. Not every pony can be expected to do the same as every pony else. Hell, if that were the case, the Marauders wouldn't be here. Big Mac said. Maybe you're right, but if he doesn't do something to shine soon, he'll be on his ass on the other side of the gate in a month, Cloudy Knight said. Big Mac looked back to Absent Moon. Tell me, Moon, was it? Yes, sir. Moon. Just Moon, he said. Right. Well, Moon, tell me what kind of skills you have, either on the ground or in the air. Big Mac said. Stealth, mostly. Gran said I could fly or trot so quietly that even she can't hear me. And Grad had great hearing for a griffin. She's, he said. Is that so? Big Mac asked, then looked over at my host. Sunspot, come forward, please. Yes, sir, Sunspot said, trotting up to stand next to Absent Moon. Absent Moon, from what I know about you, you were on top of the flyers at the flight school, right, Sunspot? You joined this group to get more ground experience, but you're one of the best flyers in the last group. Do you think you could take Moon down in the air? Big Mac said. Easily, sir. I wouldn't have more than a minute. My host said with a grin. Good. Big Mac said, turning again to Absent Moon. How bad do you be want to be a soldier, Moon? More than anything, sir. Absent Moon said. Then I'll make a deal with you. If you can take Sunspot down in the air, then I'll train you myself. And the rest of this group alongside Cloudy Nights. If you can't take her down, then you'll have to leave the military for a year and train on your own until you can come back stronger. Big Mac said. I can do it, sir. Absent Moon said with a shy smile. Please, I've seen you fly, Moon. You don't have what it takes to take me on. My host said, rolling her eyes. If you really think so, then try me. He said, glaring at her. When he did, it was like the shyness vanished and was replaced with a deep pain and anger. Those were the eyes I was used to seeing on Night Stalker. A deep hatred that was buried deep inside of him. Cloudy Knight sighed, then said, Fine, but let's make it quick. I have more to teach you all today, and I don't want to waste more time. Same for me, Big Mac said. Well, if you two think you have what it takes, then get to it. I'm going to take you down, Moon, my host said. Absent Moon didn't take time to respond. He shot into the air, faster than I thought those scrawny wings could fly. My host was shocked, too, but she recovered quickly, and she was off. She shot like a bullet towards Absent Moon. He was still climbing towards the clouds. My host flapped harder and started to gain ground, uh, air, on him. As they flew, Absent Moon yelled down at my host, If you want to win, you'll have to keep your eyes on me. That's easy with how slow you are. My host taunted. Absent Moon looked back, then flipped in the air and shot towards her. My host was ready as she twisted around in the air, aiming a kick at his face as he fell. In the last second, however, Absent Moon moved to my host's right and shot past her, his wings snapping her in the face on the way down. My host cursed and shook her head as Spot swam at her vision. She stopped herself in the air and looked down at where Absent Moon had dove, but he was gone. She looked around, but he wasn't anywhere to be seen. It was like he vanished into thin air. Where did you go? She yelled as she tried to listen for the flap of his wings. She started to look around, but there was no sight of him anywhere. Then a sharp pain shot at my host's back as some pony kicked her. She swore and twisted around to counter, but again, no pony was there. Another kick to her face as a quick flash of shadow flew by. My host fell for a moment before she caught herself and swung around, screaming into the air. Stop hiding, you coward! Lightning flashed in the distance, lighting up the darkness for a moment. When the light of the flash vanished and my host was squinting from the burst of light, a hoof slammed into her face. She was twisted around and put into a headlock. She tried to break his hold, but Absent Moon had her. Then he whispered into her ear, I told you to keep your eyes on me. Now you're done. Let go of me, you fucker! 
my host yelled. You want me to let go? Okay, then. But remember when you wake up that you got what you asked for, he responded. What? My host asked before Absent Moon flipped her around, twisted one of her wings painfully, and threw her towards the ground. She tried to fly, but her left wing was numb from whatever he had done to her, and the ground came flying up at her. She landed with a thump in a soft spot in the mud. Then everything went black. 